Hi, let's talk about what's new in FlyQ EFB version 3.2.1. Let's sum it up by saying this is mostly a release about bug fixes and reliability improvements, dozens and dozens of them. That was the primary focus of this release. But we also made some very dramatic improvements in the way that we handle ADSB traffic. First, the fixes and improvements. This is a very long list. In fact, it's actually more than a page long in the pilot's guide that has all the details. This is just a summary of them, and I'm not even going to read all of these. These are some of the top items. In 3.2, we had a problem where the maps that you download for the Colorado area may appear to be fuzzy. That's been corrected. One of the biggest issues in 3.2 was that we want to address here was dramatically improving the reliability of the chart data manager. A number of people had problems downloading data in version 3.2, and we made enormous enormous improvements in that regard here. There was also a case of uh, the database sometimes being corrupted, the database being the one that has airport information, nav aids, that kind of thing. Some people would report that they would type in an airport ident and they couldn't find it in the database. That's been corrected. There were a couple of cases, this is very rare, but there were a few cases where sometimes ADSB radar wasn't appearing as it should. That's been corrected. Then we fixed a number of long-term kind of issues that have been in the app. Um, relatively minor issues, but have been in there for a while. Things like sometimes when you turn on and off map layers, the map layers that you turned on weren't always restored properly when the app would restart. There were a number of fixes to do with Avidine, and we improved the way that the flight data recorder uh, determines the start and stop of each flight leg. Previously, sometimes you would have it, if the data would drop out for a moment, that it would appear to be two or three flights, when in reality it clearly was one flight. The application now does a much better job of determining when a flight really starts and ends. And again, there were many, many, many more fixes and improvements. So I invite you to take a look at the pilot's guide, which is new for 3.2.1, um, to see all the details there. What I really want to talk about now, though, is one of the most dramatic improvements we've made um, in quite a while on ADSB. That is, dramatic improvements to ADSB traffic display in a number of different ways. Let's talk about the traffic display in FlyQ EFB. I'll spend some time, quite a bit of time, talking about what's new, but let's recap what's been in the proc for a little bit of time that you just may not have known about. So first, what I'm looking at right now is a replay of some traffic that we saw earlier. It's moving a little faster than usual, so my little piper doesn't quite go this fast. One thing that you'll notice is the targets have different colors. In this case, there are a number of orange targets. I'll zoom in a little here, like that. Orange ones are obviously very close to us, both vertically and horizontally. If they were really close to us, like that one, it would become red. So you have a real threat level. We call that threat level coding. So that basically the ones that are gray and black, that are frankly a little bit hard to read, that's intentional. So you don't spend a lot of time focusing on it. So that's one thing. Another thing you may notice is that there is a circle around your current position. That's a 15 nautical mile ring. And the point to that are really twofold. One, to give you a sense of how far away things are if you don't have the rings display on the map, which you can also do. But it also gives you a handy filter button at the very top of it that says 15 nautical mile filter off. You see, if that's too busy, and it probably is, if you tap on that 15 nautical mile off display, look what happens all the traffic that's either outside of the ring or inside the ring, but more than 3,500 feet above or below you, gets filtered out automatically. So you can just focus really on what's happening. It's a lot easier, it's a terrific little feature, and you can turn it on, like now, tap that button again, and it goes off, and you see all of the traffic in the area, like that. Okay, so easy things to do. One of the other things that you have is you know that the directionality of every target, because of the way that the little, I like to call it kind of the Starship Enterprise logo, um, is pointing. So, for example, if I look at this plane right here, I know that it's going to the northwest, and um, it's going, take a look at the numbers on it. The numbers are important too. So plus 10 means, plus means it's above you. A minus would mean it's below you. And then the number, like now it's 8, is in hundreds of feet Oh, now it's seven, and the reason why that's going down is take a look at the little pointer next to it. Oh, looks like that aircraft is moving a little bit. Um, an aircraft will have a little marker that goes either up or down or doesn't have one, telling you whether it's going up or down and so on. So that's a handy thing too. If there is no up or down marker, it's going relatively straight. Okay. The other thing to notice is that there's lines on each of these targets. So for example, let's look in this area right here. 
the target here, I'm going to have to zoom out a little, it's playing back very fast. The target here at plus 300 is 30,000 feet above you. It has a very long line in front of it, as opposed to maybe this plane right here that only has a relatively short line. The reason for that is because the line represents where the target at its current speed will be in about two minutes. So a long line means it's moving fast, a short line means it's moving slow. Very, very handy when you're looking at your own position and you want to know, is that target going to be a threat to me? You can also, by the way, on FlyQEFB, go into settings and you could turn on a line in front of your own aircraft and make that either based on time or based on distance. So you can see basically if the two lines, your line and the target line, will intersect, in which case you know it's a threat. All of that is in the current product, nothing new there. So let's talk though about what's new and what's really interesting here. The first thing you didn't even notice, of course, is that previously in FlyQ EFB, when you turned on an ADSB receiver and start to get traffic, if the traffic layer right here didn't happen to be turned on, you won't see any traffic. Totally reasonable, but also a little annoying because you may just forget to turn on the traffic layer. Now, when you connect an ADSB system, even if the traffic layer is off, it will turn on the traffic layer automatically. And yes, you can go into settings, and I'll show you that in a second, and turn that off if you don't want it to behave that way. The first thing, though, they want to show you is uh, the tail numbers. Now we can display tail numbers on the plane. So you don't see that right now. So I'm going to hit the settings button, which is the gear button at the top of the app. And I'll go now to the second category. We also took all of the options to do with ADSB that were kind of scattered all throughout different places within settings. We uh, coalesced them into one area now called ADSB and devices. So the first one, of course, is turn the traffic layer on when connected. That's what I just talked about that you can turn on and off. Uh, the traffic ring layer. And then the third one to show the tail numbers for ADSB traffic. It's off. Now, by the way, that, I did that just for the demo. When you install the product, it, it's actually on by default. So I'm going to turn it on right now, click done, and now take a look at my screen. I see all these pretty tail numbers on the screen. Okay, uh, By tail number, though, that's actually a little bit inaccurate. You're actually seeing tail numbers of planes that have tail numbers. But if you're looking at, say, it's actually technically what's called the flight ID. So for example, this plane right here, AAL1214 is an American Airlines plane. Oop, and it just went off the scope. Or this one right here, FDX906. Those are typically the flight IDs uh, that are typed in from a commercial airliner. You can type it in though manually as well. So you see there what you type in for the flight ID or for the tail number displayed on the system now. All right, so that's pretty handy. Let's talk about what happens for more info. A lot of people have said, well, Take a look at this plane right here. This is a nine, uh, uh, sorry, N6JX. I want to know more information about it. Well, now you can just tap on it and it shows you more information. So same icon on both the pop-up and on the map. So it still shows you the altitude, the relative altitude, climbing, descending. It shows you it's going to the uh, southeast, tail number if it has it, speed and so on, all that. And you get a lot more detail about the target as well. So another example of that may be, say, this target right here. You can take a look at this one and see more detail. It's so it'll show you the flight ID, that ICAO hex code that you type into your ADSB out system. If there is a tail number, you get the tail number, your altitude, whether it's both in absolute terms, uh, MSL, and whether it's above or below you, the speed, if the aircraft is descending or climbing, the distance away from you laterally, you get the rate of closure, so if the two planes are heading towards each other, let's say that you're each going 100 knots, then you have a 200, if you're going directly uh, at each other, you have a 200 knot rate of closure. If you're at little bits of angles to each other, the math gets more complicated, but it basically shows you if the other target is getting closer to you or moving further away, it tells you when that data blip was last updated and the heading. So a lot there. All right, so that's well and good when you're tapping on an area where there's only one target in isolation. But one of the things we want to do here was to help you differentiate if there's a lot of targets in the area, all the different targets. So for example, if I tap around the middle of the screen now, it's going to show me a lot of different targets. Notice all of those colored balls and all the items in the list here. A couple of them have tail numbers. Some of them have very high threat levels, okay? So it's all there but you don't really know which one's which. If you tap on any one of them, like that, it shows you the details. 
Tap on this one, you see the details. Notice something too. So there's a display on top. It shows you the relative altitude of each one of these targets. So right now we're flying at about 5,100 feet. You can see that uh, both on the graphic display and at the gauge at the top of the screen. So that aircraft is on the display on the top of that pop-up telling you your own altitude. Then you see a series of colored balls. The colors of those balls match the colors that you see on the side of all of these targets. Pretty handy, huh? So for example, if I tap on one that looks blue over here, it's now blue. Now, it shows you, of course, all the details about that target on the right side of the screen. But notice on the map behind the pop-up that also highlights that particular target on the map. Blue is on the side of the cell. Blue is on the target. Let's try to find another one. This plane right here, 9N12 Papa Alpha, is right there. Or this plane. Okay, so all the different colors are available to you. You can see them both on the map and on the ball. By the way, you can also tap on the ball. So if I want to know what that blue target is, I can just tap here on blue and it shows me. Or what the red one is. Okay? So a lot of different ways of seeing information about the targets. There's a lot of data that's presented in a very graphical fashion because, well, that's what we do here at FlyQ. But there's still more. So let's say that you are flying in this area. It turns out that when we ask pilots why they want to see tail numbers, because we said, look, we, we didn't display tail numbers because most of the time we're just showing you the call signs of an American Airlines or a UPS plane or something. What's the point of that? And frankly, if someone's going to hit you, do you really care what the tail number is? The reply for most people is like, well, yeah, you're right. But when I'm flying with my friends uh, I, and they have ADSB out, I want to see their tail number so I know where they are. Okay. That's fair. That's reasonable. So we added a feature called the buddy list. Let me show you. So let's say that one of the, your friends is this plane right here, N4166H. I go into settings and I type in N4166H. Hit done. Take a look at that. Now that particular plane is highlighted in blue. So I know where that guy is all the time. Blue for buddy. Okay. So it's a very handy little way of tracking that guy. There he is. And you can have more than one. So for example, if uh, N4400W is also your friend, you can type that in too. N4400W. I think I got that right. There you go. So now both targets are on the screen in blue. That's really handy too because remember I said that you can turn the ADS, the tail numbers off? Let's do that. When we go into settings, I'm going to uh, show tail numbers and set that to off. So, I'll, so that declutters the screen. So most of the tail numbers I don't see except for the ones for my buddy. See that? So my buddy over here, 4400W and N4166H are both displayed. Also very handy. Both of those planes you'll notice are outside of the 15 nautical mile ring. So normally if you turn on the filter, you wouldn't see them, but hey, they're your friends. You want to see them. You want to know where they are. So I'm going to turn that filter on and watch this. The only planes that you see now outside of the filter area are the ones in your buddy list. Okay. So your buddy list is a very, very powerful feature uh, that's in the product. It really lets you keep track of where all your friends are. One other feature I want to point out, because this is actually the cause of a lot of questions, is there's a space in settings, and this has been in the previous product too, to type in the tail number to ignore. So if my plane is N8121 kilo, I can type that in. The thing about that though is this only works if your tail number is actually in the data feed. And it's only in the data feed from the ground station if you have either ADSB out or a mode S transponder, not mode C but a mode S transponder, which you know most GA planes don't have. So basically, if you don't have a mode S transponder or you don't have ADSB out, you can type in your tail number, but it can't filter that out. The whole point of this is to keep things like what might maybe here, to keep what sometimes looks like a shadow of yourself from appearing on the screen. We can filter you out if you type in your tail number, but only if you have ADSB out. 
By the way, you, you also may notice that your shadow is off by a couple hundred feet. That's because of the difference of pressure altitude, which is what comes in the ADSB data feed, versus GPS altitude, which is what we normally use in FlyQ. So they will often be off by a couple of uh, feet. And that's because also you're being seen as a target to another aircraft in the system. So in FlyQ EFB version 3.21, just to recap, we added a lot of ADSB things. You have the ability to turn on the tail numbers, which I'll do right here, show ADSB tail numbers. You have the ability to create your own personalized buddy list of your friends that always stand out over all the other traffic. And you can tap on any, any uh, set of aircraft and find out more information about them in a very graphical kind of display, very unlike every other product we've seen. So that's what's new in FlyQ EFB 3.21 in terms of ADSB. So as you can see, FlyQ EFB 3.21 has a very large number of really important bug fixes and stability improvements. That was the primary goal of this release actually. But we also made some dramatic improvements in the way that we show ADSB traffic and the way that we warn you about oncoming threats or just see where your friends are. So that's what's new in FlyQ EFB version 3.2.1. This is Steve Pedracic for Seattle Avionics. Have a great day. Thank you.